Let's ask you. Let's ask Scott. Yes. You would know. Scott, come on up here, Scott. No, honestly, I'm, I'm not saying this to make you feel better because I hate myself and I have no interest in making anyone else feel better about themselves. So, so this is... <laughs> oh, oh turn it on. Yeah, is there a switch on there? I don't see a sign. No, it's... There you go. The red, no, the red pill works. The red pill. I take that. Okay. So this is totally legit. When Hi, I'm, I'm Scott Adsit, by the way. Scott, Scott Adsit, everybody. Scott Adsit. When I saw your name on the list of people that we, that we could have on our podcast, I was so excited to see your name on oh, there. Oh, that's so nice. Thank uh, you. Honestly. We, oh, no, I saw one. you. That one doesn't work again? Oh. All right. Dude. Dude. Oh, this is Wait, really where's the other guy. one? Help us. Hello? Oh. Hello. Nope. Oh. 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 Okay. Oh. Yeah, he um, hates everybody. It's a room full of geeks. No one jumped up. I'm very no. disappointed. You, you hate everybody, so I never see you excited about anybody, but Scott adds it. Yeah. No, I mean, I don't hate it. I'm more apathetic than really Apathetic. Right. Okay, let me but, be um, fair. Uh, back in San Diego, 2006, I saw you. I, it was the first year that 30 Rock started. Yeah. Um, you didn't see me. I was actually standing on oh, the toilet you. and looking over the stall into, at you. And <laughs> <laughs> was it big? <laughs> come on, look, come on. Look, 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 look at the guy. Um, no, your your character I found to be it, you and Ad, Ad, uh, Alec Baldwin were the reason I watched Thirty Rock. Wow, thank you. Um, That's up against some pretty stiff competition. So uh, thank you. Yeah, you really like. Amazing performances, total fucking like like the cut. But you have a lot of experience. Like you you have a long like before Thirty Rock, you did a long long list yeah, of yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Pete Hornberger's not my entire right. That's the yeah. career. No. Like you look at me, I have one thing. That's it. I, I did one thing up until. Ah, you, know, you directed I'm a movie. 40, <laughs> you were in a bunch it. of Kevin's movies, and then um, and then this. Give but, yourself um, some credit. Mr. Show. That is the show. You started yeah. out. That's. Like, that's legendary status type shit, man. That's very impressive. I'm very impressed with him, in case you can't tell. Has anybody seen Mr. Show? If you haven't, for shame. Well, look, look at him. It's good. It's David Cross and Bob Odenkirk. And a bunch of really funny people. Um, I was, what was I just about to ask you now? Jimmy Fallon. I was asking a question about Jimmy Fallon. Okay. Now, have you met Jimmy Fallon? Yes. I would think so. So you might know the answer to this. Okay. This is not the same Jimmy Fallon question that I had earlier. But last night, Jimmy Fallon had on um, Kylie, Kylie and Kendall Jenner, the Kardashian girls. Kudos. Right? Because they <laughs> wrote a book. And uh, they're authors now. And he had them on for, I don't know, maybe five minutes. Why? <laughs> yes, Scott, you, why? Would you know? Like, I know, I know Kevin Smith kind of well. Somebody might be able to ask me a question and be like, why would Kevin do this? And I, I, might have an, I might have a clue, but why? I think you have to pander to the zeitgeist, right? And it's kind of lazy booking. And also, you know, you have to fill up that couch every night, four or five nights a week. Yeah. So who do people tune in to see? Train wrecks. <laughs> and people that they, they can feel emotional about. Yeah. So they get you get Tom Hanks or somebody on that you, you can feel emotional about because you like him, and then you also bring on people that are the best of both worlds because there are people who genuinely love the Jenner family, <laughs> and then the other half of the world, or 70%, hates them. So it's we're all emotional vultures. We want to feel something when we're right. watching, but we don't want to feel so committed, and we can feel... I'll tell you, the reason I've ever looked at anything, read an article, looked at a clip of them, is to feel smarter. Yeah, that's a, you know what, going back just a hair, I think you just hit on something that no shrink has ever told me. I think that's the reason I became consumed with them, because I just want to feel something, even if it's unbridled <laughs> contempt. So, <laughs> so you watched it last night. Um, oh, I yeah. did, I sat there while I was flipping around, and I saw them. And, and you stopped. And I, I sit there, yeah, and I stopped and I watched them. Well, at first I watched them come out and they're so, just so casual about, oh, Bruce was on the show and he took it over as if like, you know, they're all having dinner in their off hours and they're all one big happy group of friends. And you know, that's not really the case. But they then went on, they're on for a pretty short amount of time and they're wearing shoes that it's like, wow, like a family of four could eat for two years probably, you know, on what those shoes <laughs> cost. And um, I guess my, I, I guess, my question to you is like, 
watching, and now look, I'm a part of one of the most disturbing and destructive um, elements of television ever, reality TV. Yeah. We have a reality show. I, we had a podcast before that. I would go on and on about how much I hated reality shows. And then, and then all next of a thing sudden, you know, Kevin calls <laughs> and he goes, hey, they want you to do this comic And did he know show. how you felt about them? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's, there's no doubt. Was He's that just the turning no of some kind of screw? Um, he, well, he also knows that I'm incapable of holding down a regular job. So I'm constantly looking to him for some sort of employment. So. He probably also knows you're entertainingly uh, opinionated, right? Yeah. Oh, very much mm. so. Now, I've not seen your show, and I apologize. Are you no on the problem. show as well? I'm on the show as well. And are, what is your function on the show, both of you? What, you're the guy who... I'm the guy who sits back and makes sarcastic remarks about the customers, my friends, and points out what a lot of people think but wouldn't ever dare say. Now, are there producers <laughs> who are not writers who will give you things to say occasionally? No. They, okay, tr they tried, and I... Oh, you refuse. I wouldn't allow it. Okay, yeah. that's cool. You they, have no such scruples, I imagine. No, I go out, <laughs> I live my daily life, and he comes down on everything I do, and that, that makes it. I'm the whip. They call me the whipping boy. I mean, go, go figure. Now, now do I you can't believe how perceptive you are. Like having not seen the show at all, like knowing exactly like what <laughs> yeah. both of our functions are. Well, do you feel now an obligation? You don't need to watch the Kardashians to look smart, dude. No, You're no. smart. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Do you, do you feel an obligation to, to fit into that slot and not really f fulfill any other function in the shop? Uh, no, that's the only function I could possibly fill. So that is, yeah. a, that is the 50% that's not bullshit. Right. Yeah, that's him. That's definitely him. Yeah. The, the bullshit comes along when it's like, um, like you, can't, you couldn't possibly set up a camera and say, here's what happens during an average day at a comic book store because you would be bored to death. Right. You couldn't wait for people to bring in items that are interesting because you would no. still be fulfilling the first fucking show. I was invited mm -hmm. to do a reality show, which I'd never heard of, called like Toy Hunter. Or yes, something like that, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So they contacted me and I collect toys. I like toys. And they said that the point of the show is you name uh, a holy grail of toys or three and they will go find them. And I said, oh, that sounds pretty cool. I don't really want to do a reality show, but that might be the reason to get me on. And then they said, so what we'll do is, uh, you're gonna be looking for, and they said like, you know, an action man or a Mr. Machine from 1968, and uh, also a, a pair of Barbie shoes, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, the left arm of an Ernie puppet or something like that, right? And uh, we're gonna set you up in an apartment in LA, I live in New York, uh, we'll pretend it's your apartment. He will come to your apartment. You'll give him a tour of your apartment. <laughs> and then you will say, I really need these Barbie shoes. Now, I've got a list of things I would love to have this guy look for, but they already have the Barbie shoes. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> the only thing that's true in this would be my name, which right. after this wouldn't mean much. Yeah. So I said no, but that's the level of reality that they've got. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think... I, I, I used to watch reality TV just to get mad, and I don't like I don't know why. But yeah, because uh, we're a vulture. Because we're yeah. all vultures. We need we we don't want to deal with our own emotions, so we we transfer them into other people. Right. Look how idiotic these people yeah. are. Look how stupid they are. Look what they're doing. It makes me um, mad. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It would like enrage me, and I would go on Twitter, and I would be enraged on Twitter. And Look how so dumb everyone these would know. are. Because uh, we I, love I, to feel <laughs> enraged. Because yeah. we feel smart. Um, yes. And 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 there were, it hit me at a certain point, and it was actually before we started doing our show that I was like, wait, this, this can't possibly be real. You know, like, you, you watch the editing, and then you, you know, use common sense. And, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, there's no way this shit's real. And then when we started to do our show, certain things are just not organic. They're just not, and they, they just couldn't be. There's no not way we would do certain things. Do you guys redo scenes? Um, sometimes if they can't, they, they said this year they're getting another camera because sometimes <laughs> they miss lines. Yeah, we'll step on each other's <laughs> lines. So they're like, yeah. hey, can you say that again real quick? Yeah, yeah. So and I don't like to, on a personal level, I don't like to make the same joke twice because the second time it just sounds forced. It mm -hmm. doesn't sound the same. And um, I told a story once with a podcast that I did with Kevin about the producers the second season were different from the first season. The reason's not that interesting. 
but these guys were very bent on shaping the show into what they wanted it to be. And the number of times they tried to get me to say, well, say this, make this joke. Um, it got to the point where I, I, I called Kevin and I said, if these guys are the producers next year, I said, and dude, you know I love you, and, and you know I love doing this, I said, I quit. I, I, I won't do it anymore. And um, it took a while, but they eventually got fired because I complained about them so much. Huh. Yeah, um, mind you, it was on the last day of production, but, yeah, but they got I fired. I complained so you for, got your wish. For, for months, but they eventually <laughs> got fired. Because uh, th and there was one time where like, the, the guy is, uh, Ming and I are doing some transaction up front, and I, and I make the joke, and I end the scene how I think that put the button on it, as they say in the industry. And um, so I put the button on it, and the guy says, okay, well, this time, can you make this joke? Can you say this? And it, I just, I had, had had my fill of this dude, and I said, no. I said, and you know why? Because it's not funny. I said, and you're not funny. And this is with a crew of probably like 15 people standing right there. I said, stop telling me what to say. No, my job is just to make joke, jokes up off the top of my head all day long. Yeah. Are all 100% going to hit? Of course not. Of course not. Who knows? 20% might hit that day. But no matter what, they're funnier than this douchebag. And it's like, that's not your job. Your job is not to tell me what to say. It's not to tell him what to say. It's not to try to shape the show into what you want it to be. That's, that happens in editing. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But it was really the only way like, I could reconcile with, you know, with the money, of course, too. But reconcile being on reality TV is having Kevin say, let these guys do whatever they want. It's their show. AMC w wanted them, they, they, they didn't want to cast anybody else, so let them do what they want. Mm. And he, uh, my, f my favorite moment from that season was Walter and I, one, my friend Walter and I, one of the storylines was we were doing a comic book and we wanted to make a cheesy little video as like a uh, promotional video for the comic. And a I sizzle. A, yes, a sizzle reel. And um, so much industry speak. I know, Are I love it. Impressed? I love it. And uh, I knew they wouldn't let us do it. They would say no. So I wrote to Kevin and I said, here's what we want to do. I know they're going to say no to us. So when they say no, can you please back us up and say, hey, you know, this is what they want to do. He didn't even bother writing to them. He copied and pasted my email, <laughs> wrote, let Brian and Walt do whatever they want, Kevin. <laughs> and then sent it back to the producers. It who, happened. Who, and, and then the and next then day, the, the next day, day we were doing, That's we were doing cool. the, uh, yeah, and it's, it, it's nice to have a friend like Kevin who has done so much so that someone like me who has really done so little. <laughs> you you know, made a sizzle. Yeah, I made a sizzle reel. Um, is able to go and, and do something like that. You know, it's, it's, it's very, very rare. It, people constantly are like, nepotism. The only reason you're on the show is because of Kevin Smith. It's like, the reason we got the chance for the show is because of Kevin Smith. But they don't put you on for four years if there's nothing to you, you know, yeah. if you're absolutely horrible, you know? Yeah. Or do they? I mean, God. I don't know. We'll find out soon. You know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Maybe I'm completely horrible. Maybe people horrible. are just tuning in to hate you. you yeah. Know? Oh, my God. Oh, dude. You know what? If anyone's tuning in to hate someone, it's definitely me. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Now, the people who come into the shop, are they, do they sign waivers before they come in? Are they hired beforehand? Do they know days and weeks before if they're coming in to, look, to browse? Um, anyone who's going to be on camera, and if you notice, everyone wears oversized, ugly shirts that are, like, turned inside out. To hide their bellies? To hide, uh, that's why I do it. Yeah. Um, the w reason they do it is so there's no um, oh, logos, logos, logos yeah, and stuff copyright. like that. But I guess what they do is they go to a casting agency and they have people who, you know, they say, okay, I have a pair of Barbie shoes I want to bring in. And they'll say, okay, these Barbie shoes are interesting enough to be on screen, so that person will sign the waiver. And it's like, all that is cast. The, those aren't people that are just walking in off the street. Right. And a lot of times, obviously, they want more colorful characters. Um, do they assign colorful them. characters with a, a desire or whatever that they then pretend to have? Like, I really need Spider-Man 302? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, we've had that um, second season again. It was like, for some reason, they constantly were going after this same comic. It was like um, It's like X-Men, yeah, Hulk 181, giant size X-Men. Th there were two comics where at a certain point I was like, what, is this the, is this the X-Men and Hulk show? Like, why do we keep <laughs> going after these same comics? But they'll do that sometimes, you know, just, I guess, what they think the audience will want to see. Or you know? recognize. Yeah, or recognize at all. 
Yeah, sometimes in the second season they wanted obscure stuff that no one but no one would know what it was. So Brother so Voodoo. What's, what's the point? Oh, Brother Voodoo. I think we had Brother Voodoo on, didn't we? Yeah, that's I think nice, we did. That's that's a nice good pull. <laughs> Here's another one. Modam. Can you just stay up here the whole time? I just want <laughs> yeah, to talk to you the whole time. I hang out here for another I, hour and a half. I'm serious, man. I knew it. I, I knew it was going to be fun to have to have you here, man. I um, <laughs> I just learned something about you. I wanted you to confirm it. Um, a whole lifetime ago, I got hired by Ben Affleck. And he was like, I was in Maryland at the time. He was like, well, I'll hire you. You have to move to L.A. And I'm like, I don't know about that. He's like, listen, throw out a number, and I'll, I'll, I'll do it. And I'm like, so I throw out this obscene number for a salary. He's like, done. So I got the check. What I did was I went out, I bought a pinball machine. That pinball machine was called Medieval Madness. Yes. And it's the best pinball machine ever created. I totally agree. And uh, the, there were voices in this machine, and I just recently learned those voices were done by you. Is, that, is this true? Yes, the voices are me and a That's guy named crazy. Uh, Kevin Dorf. We wrote most of the dialogue as well. We didn't write the games uh, The design, story. yeah, I think that was done by Brian Eddy, I believe, was a designer yes. from Williams. and we worked with them. Uh, his team and uh, and Kevin Dorf and I wrote all the dialogue and then Kevin and I recorded the voices and all the female voices are a uh, young uh, aspiring actress in Chicago named Tina Fey. Yeah, that, which is crazy. <laughs> so if you play Medieval Madness, you're playing with uh, me and Tina Fey and Kevin Dorf. How, how did that happen? Uh, well, Kevin and I were working at Second City on the main stage uh, and I think with Tina at the same time, yeah. So the three of us were on the main stage of Second City in Chicago, and Pat Bally, uh, Midway, is, uh, is headquartered there, and yeah. that's where they manufacture everything, that's where they write the, all their offices and everything. So they like our show, and they call us and say, we want you to help us out with some funny dialogue. Um, uh, so write that for us, and then they know we're actors, so they said, would you please do the voices? And then we, we knew we needed a girl, so you know, we love Tina. Yeah, I was like, hey, can you come in and yeah, do so this? Yes, we hired Tina. Threw her a bone. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's awesome. Um, did they give you, did you get a, the game at all? Did no, they, no, they, no. They, they I actually you, bought the game after I got on TV. I had enough money to yeah, throw it was expensive. away on it. it was, yeah, well, I ordered it on eBay, I think, from Germany. So I had to have it shipped in a crate. Yeah, and it was a crated medieval madness. And I lived madness. in a one-bedroom apartment so did I. in Chicago. I had no business owning a pinball machine. <laughs> well, I sent it to my sisters in Atlanta. So I never played it until about a year later. But she got it set up, and she maintains it. It's still there. You still have it. Um, so yeah. I bought it. When I bought it, I bought it for four grand. Sold it a year later because I got fired. Nah, I got laid off from that job yeah. that allowed me to buy the pinball machine a year later for... 4,200, I sold it for four. You, do you know how much that machine is worth now? How much? Uh, about 15. Nice. 15. And it's, it's double what I paid. And it's gonna be, it's gonna, it's gonna just continue to go up. It's a, it's a part of historical pinball legend. That's cool, now. that's cool. When you get laid off and 10 years later you still haven't been asked back, you've pretty much been fired, right? He really wants to make this distinction. But no, <laughs> what there's was a the difference. Job? There's a difference. Uh, I worked, um, uh, they had a, Ben and Matt had a reality show called Project Greenlight back in oh, yeah, 2000. Yeah. I had friends who worked on that. Yeah, I, yeah, I worked on that as well. As and, what? Uh, I did the website and I did okay. uh, some of the logos and the graphics, and uh, that th they ran that for three seasons and then it, you know, it ended. And did anybody really explode out of there? Were any, any of the winners or any of the um, runners? Shia LaBeouf. Uh, no, he wasn't a winner, but he was. He's that was one actor. of his first actor roles in one of the movies well, what, that came out. What about out of the there. directors? No. Ah, oh, it's a shame. No, not yeah. You don't hear from uh, old Pete Jones anymore, who was the first winner of the first season. Oh. And um, ironically enough, they're bringing it back though, Project Greenlight. Because it was such a success? I, I guess, well, <laughs> they, um, if you read the press release, it was like, well, you know, it, it wasn't that, it, it worked, but we were ahead of our time back in 2000. Now with Twitter and Instagram and you know how oh. social media works now, now's the time to do it 14 years later. So, so God bless them. Well, I hope Pete Jones is working. That would be nice. I, I have no idea, but I'll, I'll find out. I'm gonna find out I'm too. waiting for Affleck to hire me back so I can buy Medieval Madness back. Keep and waiting. hear your beautiful voice again. <laughs> <laughs> is there any project that you that you want to like? I hate to use the word dream project. It just sounds corny for some reason. But a project that like you're writing or that you're like, if I could do this, I would do it in a heartbeat. Um, if I could be involved in Doctor Who in any way, I would. Doctor Who. Uh, yeah, um, and that's from I, since I was 11 or something, 12. Um, and I don't know, I've, I've had some really good jobs. Um, but the ultimate would be to uh, do a movie 
where I get to like hire friends and yeah. give them work and show the world how great they are. That would be a dream project. Isn't it? Because um, there are a lot of actors out there and, and, and other people and uh, directors and editors and, and cinematographers who are really talented and do not get enough credit or, or enough work and they're brilliant. And that would be my dream is to give work. It gets easier and easier too, I think, with some with, with the internet. You have Kickstarter, you have um, what's what's yeah, uh, GoFundMe, you have GoFundMe, Indiegogo, all that. and and people have used that. Like Adam Carolla, I think, used it not too long ago. Mm -hmm. And then there's this whole argument, like, well, you know, you have contacts, so you shouldn't be using this. This is just for people who, you know, there's somebody's always going to argue about something, but you know, you actually like you, in this day and age, you could, like, you you, you probably could. Hey. Yeah, look at me. I mean, you 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 have a you you have a resume that that definitely is it, it demands a second look. And when people are like, okay, well, why not give this dude money? Mm. You know, you have a, obviously you have a, a fan base. And Thirty Rock was on for what six years? Was it six years? Seven. Seven years. It looked like it was going to go away for a little while, right? Well, that was always a danger. Um, I mean, there was always. Uh, the ratings question, and then, uh, I, I mean, I didn't get a place in New York in any permanent way until the season three or four, because I just thought, well, you know, we're not going to stay on. I just, I was, I'm a cynical, I'm cynical that way. Um, but there was always, like, the danger that Alec might just retire from acting. Right. Um, <laughs> or that the ratings will take <laughs> us off. Um, or that the, they'll j the, the network will just stop championing, champion, championing, championing? The show, yeah, championing the show, championing. Yeah. Sorry, English isn't my first language. Championing, so. <laughs> championing the show. But we always uh, did well because the network did like it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Lauren was a great uh, cheerleader for it. Well, it was, it was always so critically well received, you know, even if the yeah, we kept ratings getting didn't reflect it in the beginning, yeah. But it doesn't always help, I mean, we, we, I really, was worried we wouldn't get over that uh, Arrested Development hump mm -hmm. of three years, because there's, I mean, there's a show. Right. That's a great show. That's a groundbreaking thing that got canceled because nobody was watching it. And mm -hmm. it won Emmys, and it had great critical fame, and, and people geeking out over it. Did any, did you or anyone else on set ever accuse, uh, and I like him, but uh, Judah, uh, Freelander of ripping off Bruce Blanche's whole act. <laughs> <laughs> he has said that many times. Has he? Yeah. yeah. He I credits Bruce in private all the time. In private, yeah. I watched him. Um, I don't. I, I must have had a lot of free time because I watched uh, half oh, of a, 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 a Bruce Blanche documentary a, the, uh, a few weeks ago, and I had no idea how much that dude wrote. I had no idea how much he actually. I mean, I don't particularly find him that funny, but. The, the volume of work that that guy. Judah? No, uh, Bruce Valanche. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it is. <laughs> yes, there's, he's a very pro it's prolific man. Insane, man. I don't know. I don't want you to leave. I don't, I don't Does anyone know who I Bruce Valanche is? <laughs> yeah, anyone watch Hollywood Squares? <laughs> Do they even knows. have that anymore? Yeah, that guy knows. There we go. Oh, he, he, and he, writes, he writes jokes, he's a joke writer. Yeah, it's like if, if um, say, Sandra Bullock is at a, uh, is like at an Emmy Award show or something, and they're like, okay, okay, go out there and say something funny, they'll go to Bruce Valanche. Yeah, he has a bunch of Emmys for writing award shows. He, he gets the Emmys for writing the Emmys. <laughs> yeah. And, he's, and I can say this because I share it, and he's a disturbing-looking human being, kind of. Yeah, he's like um, Harry Knowles without the beard. Yeah, yeah. Are you supposed to be um, from Beetlejuice? Are you supposed to be the Beetlejuice? You look crazy. You look a lot like. I know. Yeah. We know him. Does anyone have any questions? Or because or, I feel like I'm taking up all all your time with my with my questions. Yeah, th how could you not? This have all a you question? I haven't seen you this happy in a long time. I'm so not you kidding around. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was I'm, very I'm not excited kidding. that you were here. Well, this is, you look ecstatic. So I'm very excited. <laughs> this is him. Yeah, ecstatic. this is ecstatic for my, me. This is him ecstatic. Anybody? No questions. And nobody wants to ask him anything. You do. Yeah. Go ahead. Go on. Yeah. There's a microphone there too. Oh yeah. Everyone's looking at you. Oh, that's great. Um, I, it's kind of a random question, but I know that you probably, you know, you come to cons a lot and get to meet a lot of people. And you know, he just finished saying, you know, the money's what really motivates. But has there ever been like an experience with a fan that you were like, what just happened right now? Or was there any kind of, is there any kind of crazy story? That <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever just have an amazing experience at a con that I'm like, I won't ever forget that. <laughs> um, 
I've had I've had body parts exposed to me before. Um, oh. He's still talking about me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I haven't had anything where where it just was like I wish I hadn't come. It's oh. always been very pleasant. So everyone's very nice. No one's ever angry that I was on Thirty Rock. No, <laughs> God. No, honestly, I I think. I shouldn't speak for the whole room, but I speak for myself. I agree with him, 30 Rock, and the biggest reason why I watched it was your character, just because, even as a chick, I just relate so hard to Peter Horberg. <laughs> way too hard. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, from, and I, and from, I'm sorry. From beginning to end, I mean, like, I mean, spoil alert if you haven't seen it, but like when, when your wife pulls up at the end in the van, it's mm. just like, yeah, like you literally so took close. off and had a different life. Yeah. <laughs> it was so awesome. So close to making it out of there. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Are there any Tracy Morgan stories you want to share? Uh, well, he's doing better. And um, he's uh, in a rehab thing now, a physical rehab, of course. And um, he's doing better. Uh, Tracy is just great because he brings his personality wherever he goes, and it's a f crazy personality. I mean, he, Tr Tracy Morgan is, you know, a, a kind of a dialed down version of Tracy. Uh, no, sorry, the other way around. Tracy Jordan is a dialed down version of Tracy Morgan. Uh, and the, he, he, <laughs> he likes to hold court. And, uh, and tell his jokes. You'll hear the same joke maybe five or six times in a sitting. Um, but the great thing is he's, a, he's got a really big heart and he's a good father, believe it or not. And it'll be like you'll be, you'll be standing at craft services getting some food and you'll hear this beautiful woman's voice singing a 70s ballad. Uh, you know, I don't know how to love him or something. And it's just <laughs> so melodious and lovely, and you wonder who that woman could be, and it's Tracy. And he walks up to you and just starts singing right in your face, just with the m most sincere emotion you could ever imagine. And if you join him, that's fantastic. He's very happy, but if you don't, he doesn't care. He's there to perform in every moment of his life. Um, and then he'll stop singing, and he'll be right in your face and tell you, you know, something like... Uh, you gotta raise your kids, man. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be their friend. You gotta raise your kids. <laughs> <laughs> Our uh, Kevin, uh, friend Kevin Smith. Did you have one? Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Right up. Our friend, right up here. Our friend Kevin Smith uh, worked with worked with him in a cop, out. cop out, and he said the same thing. He said it's a nonstop fountain of creativity. He goes. He just. Yeah. He never stops. Yeah. He, he said it's unreal. It's like Mel Brooks, kind of. Yeah. And that he's on most of the time. And when he's off, you know, he's very sincere and sweet. Oh. Hi. Hello. Hey, um, how did you feel about the ending of 30 Rock? Um, I thought it ended just about right. I think everybody yeah. ended up in the right place. Did you see it? Yeah. Um, of and the, <laughs> the ideas, and spoiler alert if you want to turn this off now, um, but the idea, or if anybody doesn't want to hear this, just... Um, but the idea that... Uh, <laughs> that Tina then adopts two kids that are just like Jenna and Tracy. That's brilliant. And uh, and Pete had his little, you know, gentleman's weekend for a year or whatever it was. And but then he he's a family man. That's who he is. So he ended up back there. But like Grizzen dot com becoming really successful, is beautiful, and and Tina working for Grizz. That's everything. Just worked out really really well. It's beautiful. Yeah. I loved it. Oh, how did you feel about Alec Baldwin as, as his character? Uh, I thought like he did his, a good job. Like his ending. Like oh, the way he kind of went off in the sunset? Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was lovely. Did you want something different? No. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. He's asking I'll see what I can do. <laughs> There's always flash fiction. Oh, oh. <laughs> we're, we're just really big fans. Me and oh, thank you. Sister, so yeah. Um, I've been told that our love fest has to wrap up. We have okay. Mr. Bellman. Mr. Alan Bell Bellman. Um, Thank you. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you, yes. Scott. Thank you so Scott much. Scott Adson, everybody. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Absolutely.